Siraj. The Book of Ecclesiasticus All wisdom comes from Yahuwah and is with him forever. Who can number the sand of the sea and the drops of rain in the days of eternity? Who can find out the heights of the Shamayim and the breadth of the earth and the deep and wisdom? Wisdom has been created before all things and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. The word of the Most High is the fountain of wisdom, and her ways are everlasting commandments. To whom has the root of wisdom been revealed? Or who has known her wise counsels? Unto whom has the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest? And who has understood her great experience? There is one wise and greatly to be feared, Yahuwah, sitting upon his throne. He created her and saw her and numbered her and poured her out upon all his works. She is with all flesh, according to his gift, and he has given her to them that love him. The fear of Yahuwah is honor, and esteem, and gladness, and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of Yahuwah makes a merry heart, and gives joy, and gladness, and a long life. Whoso fears Yahuwah, it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor in the day of his death. To fear Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the trustworthy in the womb. She has built an everlasting foundation with men, and she shall continue with their seed. To fear Yahuwah is fullness of wisdom, and fills men with her fruits. She fills all their house with things desirable, and the garners with her increase. The fear of Yahuwah is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish both which are the gifts of Elohim, and it enlarges their rejoicing that love him. Wisdom rains down skill and knowledge of understanding, and exhausts them to honor that hold her fast. The root of wisdom is to fear Yahuwah, and the branches thereof are long life. The fear of Yahuwah drives away sins, and where it is present, it turns away wrath. A furious man cannot be justified, for the sway of his fury shall be his destruction. A patient man will tear for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. He will hide his words for a time, and the lips of many shall declare his wisdom. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but the fear of Elohim is abominable to a sinner. If you desire wisdom, guard the commandments, and Yahuwah shall give her unto you. For the fear of Yahuwah is wisdom and instruction, and belief and meekness are his delights. Distrust not the fear of Yahuwah when you are poor, and don't come unto him with a double heart. Be not a hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what you speak. Exalt not yourself, lest you fall, and bring dishonor upon your soul. And so Elohim discover your secrets, and cast you down in the midst of the assembly. Because you came not in truth to the fear of Yahuwah, but your heart is full of deceit. My son, if you come to serve Yahuwah, prepare your soul for temptation. Set your heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that you may be increased at your last end. Whatsoever is brought upon you, take cheerfully, and be patient when you are changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him. And he will help you, order your way aright, and trust in him. Ye that fear Yahuwah, wait for his mercy, and go not aside lest you fall. Ye that fear Yahuwah, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear Yahuwah, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old, and see, did ever any trust in Yahuwah and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For Yahuwah is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgives sins, and saves in time of affliction. Woe be to the fearful hearts, and faint hands, and the sinner that goes two ways. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believes not, therefore he shall not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will you do when Yahuwah shall visit you? 
They that fear Yahuwah will not disobey his word, and they that love him will guard his ways. They that fear Yahuwah will seek that which is well pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the Torah. They that fear Yahuwah will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, We will fall into the hands of Yahuwah, and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter, that you may be safe. For Yahuwah has given the father honor over the children, and has confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honors his father makes an atonement for his sins, and he that honors his mother is as one that lays up treasure. Whoso honors his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he makes his prayer, he shall be heard. He that honors his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient unto Yahuwah shall be a comfort to his mother. He that reveres Yahuwah will honor his father, and will do service unto his parents, as to his masters. Honor your father and mother, both in word and deed, that a baraka may come upon you from them. For the baraka of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother roots out foundations. Esteem not in the dishonor of your father, for your father's dishonor is no esteem unto you. For the esteem of a man is from the honor of his father, and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. My son, help your father in his age, and grieve him not as long as he lives. And if his understanding fail, have patience with him, and despise him not when you are in your full strength. For the relieving of your father shall not be forgotten. And instead of sins, it shall be added to build you up. In the day of your affliction, it shall be remembered. Your sins also shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. He that forsakes his father is as a blasphemer. And he that angers his mother is cursed of Elohim. My son, go on with your business in meekness. So shall you be beloved of him that is approved. The greater you are, the more humble yourself. And you shall find favor before Yahuwah. Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. The power of Yahuwah is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Seek not out things that are too hard for you, not to search the things that are above your strength. But what is commanded you, think upon this with reverence. For it is not needful for you to see with your eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. For more things are showed unto you than men understand. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. With our eyes you shall want light. Profess not the knowledge therefore that you have not. A stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last, and he that loves danger shall perish therein. An obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows, and the wicked man shall heap sin upon sin. In the punishment of the proud, there is no remedy, for the plant of wickedness has taken root in him. The heart of the prudent will understand the parable, and an attentive ear is the desire of a wise man. Water will quench a flame and fire, and alms make an atonement for sins. And he that requites good turns is mindful of that which may come hereafter. And when he falls, he shall find a stay. My son. Defraud not the poor of his living, and make not the needy eyes to wait long. Make not a hungry soul sorrowful, neither provoke a man in his distress. Add not more trouble to a heart that is vexed, and defer not to give to him that is in need. Reject not the supplication of the afflicted, not to turn away your face from a poor man. Turn not away your eye from the needy, and give him none occasion to curse you. For if he curse you in the bitterness of his soul, his prayer shall be heard of him that made him. Get yourself the love of the assembly and bow your head to a great man. Let it not grieve you to bow down your ear to the poor and give him a friendly answer with meekness. Deliver him that suffers wrong from the hand of the oppressor and be not faint hearted when you sit in judgment. Be as a father unto the fatherless instead of a man unto the mother. So shall you be as the son of the most high. 
and he shall love you more than your mother does. Wisdom exalts her children and lays hold of them that seek her. He that loves her loves life. And they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. He that holds her fast shall inherit esteem. And wheresoever she enters, Yahuwah will barak. They that serve her shall minister to the Kadosh one. And them that love her, Yahuwah loves. Whoso gives ear unto her shall judge the nations. And he that attends unto her shall dwell securely. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her. And his generation shall hold her in possession. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways, and bring fear and dread upon him, and torment him with her discipline, until she may trust his soul, and try him by her tour. Then she will return the straight way unto him, and comfort him, and show him her secrets. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him, and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity, and beware of evil, and be not ashamed when it concerns your soul. For there is a shame that brings sin, and there is a shame which is esteem and favor. Accept no person against your soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause you to fall. And refrain not to speak, when there is occasion to do good, and hide not your wisdom in her beauty. For by speech wisdom shall be known, and learning by the word of the tongue. And know why I speak against the truth, but be abashed of the error of your ignorance. Be not ashamed to confess your sins, and force not the course of the river. Don't make yourself an underling to a foolish man, neither accept the person of the mighty. Strive for the truth unto death, and Yahuwah shall fight for you. Be not hasty in your tongue, and in your deeds slack and remiss. Be not as a lion in your house, nor frantic among your servants. Let not your hand be stretched out to receive. And shut when you shall repay. Set your heart upon your goods, and say not, I have enough of my life. Follow not your own mind and your strength, to walk in the ways of your heart, and say not, Who shall control me for my works? For Yahuwah will surely revenge your pride. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm has happened unto me? For Yahuwah is long-suffering. He will in no wise let you go. Concerning atonement, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not, His mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rest upon sinners. May no tarrying to turn to Yahuwah, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of Yahuwah come forth, and in your security you shall be destroyed. And perish in the day of vengeance. Set not your heart upon goods unjustly gotten. For they shall not profit you in the day of calamity. Winnow not with every wind. And go not into every way. For so does the sinner that has a double tongue. Be steadfast in your understanding. And let your word be the same. Be swift to hear. And let your life be sincere. And with patience give answer. If you have understanding. Answer your neighbor. If not. Lay your hand upon your mouth. Honor and shame is in talk, and the tongue of man is his fall. Be not called a whisperer, and lie not in wait with your tongue. For a foul shame is upon the thief, and an evil condemnation upon the double tongue. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small one. Instead of a friend, become not an enemy, for thereby you shall inherit an ill name, shame, and reproach. Even so shall a sinner that has a double tongue. Install not yourself in the counsel of your own heart, that your soul be torn in pieces as a bull strain alone. You shall eat up your leaves and lose your fruit and leave yourself as a dry tree. A wicked soul shall destroy him that has it and shall make him to be laughed to scorn of his enemies. Sweet language will multiply friends. And a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. If you will get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. It will not abide in the day of your trouble. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover your reproach. 
Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of your affliction. But in your prosperity, he will be as yourself and will be bold over your servants. If you be brought low, he will be against you and will hide himself from your face. Separate yourself from your enemies and take heed of your friends. A trustworthy friend is a strong defense and he that has found such one has found a treasure. Nothing countervails a trustworthy friend, and his excellency is invaluable. A trustworthy friend is the medicine of life, and they that revere Yahuwah shall find him. Whoso reveres Yahuwah shall direct his friendship aright, for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. My son, gather instruction from your youth up, so shall you find wisdom to your old age. Come unto her as one that plows and sows. And wait for her good fruits, for you shall not toil much in laboring about her, but you shall eat of her fruits right soon. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial, and he will cast her from him ere it be long. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. Give ear, my son, receive my advice, and refuse not my counsel. And put your feet into her fetters, and your neck into her chain. Bow down your shoulder, and bear her, and be not grieved with her bonds. Come on to her with your whole heart, and keep her ways with all your power. Search, and seek, and she shall be made known unto you. And when you have got hold of her, let her not go. For at the last you shall find her rest, and that shall be turned to your joy. Then shall her fetters be a strong defense for you, and her chains a robe of esteem. For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are purple lace. You shall put her on as a robe of honor, and shall put her about you as a crown of joy. My son, if you will, you shall be taught. And if you will apply your mind, you shall be prudent. If you love to hear, you shall receive understanding. And if you bow your ear, you shall be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders, and cleave unto him that is wise. Be willing to hear every codex discourse, and let not the parables of understanding escape you. And if you see a man of understanding, get you early unto him, and let your foot wear the steps of his door. Let your mind be upon the ordinances of Yahuwah, and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish your heart, and give you wisdom at your own desire. Do no evil, so shall no harm come on to you. Depart from the unjust, and iniquity shall turn away from you. My son, sow not upon the furrows of unrighteousness, and you shall not reap them sevenfold. Seat not of Yahuwah preeminence, neither of the king the seat of honor. Do not justify yourself before Yahuwah, and boast not of your wisdom before the king. Seek not to be judged, being not able to take away iniquity. Lest at any time you fear the person of the mighty, a stumbling block in the way of your uprightness. Offend not against the multitude of a city, and then you shall not cast yourself down among the people. Bind not one sin upon another, for in one you shall not be unpunished. Say not, The Luahim will look upon the multitude of my oblations, and when I offer to the Most High, he will accept it. Be not faint hearted when you make your prayer, and neglect not to give alms. Laugh no man to scorn in the bitterness of his soul, but there is one which humbles and exalts. Devise not a lie against your brother, neither do the like to your friend. Use not to make any manner of lie, for the custom thereof is not good. Use not many words in the multitude of elders, and make not much babbling when you pray. Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which the Most High has ordained. Number not yourself among the multitude of sinners, but remember that wrath will not tarry long. Humble yourself greatly, for the vengeance of the wicked is fire and worms. Change not a friend for any good by no means, neither a trustworthy brother for the gold of Ophir. Forego not a wise and good woman, for her favor is above gold. Whereas your servant works truly, and treat him not evil nor the hireling that bestows himself wholly for you. 
Does your soul love a good servant and defraud him not of liberty? Have you cattle? Have an eye to them, and if they be for your profits, keep them with you. Have you children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. Have you daughters? Have a care of their body, and show not yourself cheerful toward them. Marry a daughter, and so shall you have performed a weighty matter. But give her to a man of understanding. Have you a woman after your mind? Forsake her not, but give not yourself over to a light woman. Honor your father with your whole heart, and forget not the sorrows of your mother. Remember that you were begotten of them, and how can you recompense them the things that they have done for you? Revere Yahuwah with all your soul, and reverence his priests. Love him that made you of all your strength, and forsake not his ministers. Revere Yahuwah, and honor the priests, and give him his portion, as it is commanded you, the first fruits, and the trespass offering, and the gift of the shoulders and the sacrifice of Kodashah, and the first fruits of the Kodash things. And stretch your hand unto the poor, that your Baraka may be perfected. A gift has favor in the sight of every living man. And for the dead, detain it not. Fail not to be with them that weep, and mourn with them that mourn. Be not slow to visit the sick, for that shall make you to be beloved. Whatsoever you take in hand, remember the end. And you shall never do amiss. Strive not with a mighty man, lest you fall into his hands. Be not at variance with a rich man, lest he overweigh you. For gold has destroyed many, and perverted the hearts of kings. Strive not with a man that is full of tongue, and heap not wood upon his fire. Jest not with a rude man, lest your ancestors be disgraced. Reproach not a man that turns from sin. But remember that we are all worthy of punishment. Dishonor not a man in his old age, for even some of us wax old. Rejoice not over your greatest enemy being dead, but remember that we all die. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint yourself with their proverbs, for of them you shall learn Torah, and how to serve great men with ease. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers, and of them you shall learn understanding and to give answer as need requires. Kindle not the coals of a sinner, lest you be burnt with the flame of his fire. Rise not up in anger at the presence of an injurious person, lest he lie in wait to entrap you in your words. Lend not on to him that is mightier than yourself. For if you lend him, count it but lost. Be not surety above your power, for if you be surety, take care to pay it. Go not to law with a judge, for they will judge for him according to his honor. Travel not by the way with a bold fellow, lest he become grievous unto you, for he will do according to his own will, and you shall perish with him through his folly. Strive not with an angry man, and go not with him into a solitary place. For blood is as nothing in his sight, and where there is no help, he will overthrow you. Consult not with a fool, for he cannot keep counsel. Do no secret thing before a stranger, for you know not what he will bring forth. Open not your heart to every man, lest he requite you with a shrewd turn. Be not jealous over the wife of your bosom, and teach her not an evil lesson against yourself. Give not your soul unto a woman to set her foot upon your substance. Meet not with a harlot, lest you fall into her snares. Don't use much company of a woman that is a singer, that you be taken with her attempts. Gaze not on a maid, that you fall not by those things that are precious in her. Give not your soul unto harlots, that you lose not your inheritance. Look not round about you in the streets of the city, not to wander in the solitary place thereof. Turn away your eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire. Sit not at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in your arms, and spend not your money with her at the wine, lest your heart incline unto her, and so through your desire you fall into destruction. Forsake not an old friend, for the new is not comparable to him. A new friend is a new wineskin, when it is old you shall drink it with pleasure. 
Envy not the esteem of a sinner, for you know not what shall be his end. Delight not in the thing that the wicked have pleasure in, but remember, they shall not go unpunished unto their grave. Keep far from the man that has power to kill, so shall you not doubt the fear of death. And if you come on to him, make no fault, lest he take away your life presently. Remember that you go in the midst of snares, and that you walk upon the battlements of the city. As near as you can, guess at your neighbor, and consult with the wise. Let your talk be with the wise, and all your communication in the Torah of the Most High. And let just men eat and drink with you. And let your esteem be in the fear of Yahuwah. For the hand of the artificer, the work shall be commended, and the wise ruler of the people for his speech. A man of an ill tongue is dangerous in his city, and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated. A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. An unwise king destroys his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hand of Yahuwah, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. In the hand of Elohim is the prosperity of man, and upon the person of the scribe shall he lay his honor. Bear not hatred to your neighbor for every wrong, and do nothing at all by injurious practices. Pride is hateful before Elohim and man, and by both does one commit iniquity. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man, for such one sets his own soul for sale. Because while he lives, he casts away his bowels. The physician cuts off a long disease, and he that is today a king, tomorrow shall die. But when a man is dead, he shall inherit creeping things, beasts, and worms. The beginning of pride is when one departs from Elohim, and his heart is turned away from his maker. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that has it shall pour out abomination. And therefore Yahuwah brought upon them strange calamities, and overthrew them utterly. Yahuwah has cast down the thrones of proud princes, and set up the meek in their stead. Yahuwah has plucked up the roots of the proud nations, and planted the lowly in their place. Yahuwah overthrew countries of the heathen, and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He took some of them away, and destroyed them, and has made their memorial to cease from the earth. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. They that revere Yahuwah are a sure seed, and they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the Torah are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. Among brethren, he that is chief is honorable. So are they that revere Yahuwah in his eyes. The reverence of Yahuwah goes before the obtaining of authority, but roughness and pride is the losing thereof. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their esteem is the reverence of Yahuwah. It is not meet to despise the poor man that has understanding, neither is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. Great men, and judges, and rulers shall be honored, yet is there none of them greater than he that reveres Yahuwah. On to the servant that is wise, they that are free shall do service, and he that has knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. Be not overwise in doing your business, and boast not yourself in the time of your distress. Better is he that labors and abounds in all things than he that boasts himself and wants bread. My son, esteem your soul in meekness, and give it honor according to the dignity thereof. Who will justify him that sins against his own soul, and who will honor him that dishonors his own life? The poor man is honored for his skill, and the rich man is honored for his riches. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches? And he that is dishonorable in riches, how much more in poverty? Wisdom lifts up the head of him that is of low degree. It makes him to sit among great men. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. 
The bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. Boast not of your clothing and garment, and exalt not yourself in the day of honor. For the works of Yahuwah are wonderful, and his works among men are hidden. Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of has worn the crown. Many mighty men have been greatly disgraced, and the honorable delivered into other men's hands. Blame not before you have examined the truth. Understand first, and then rebuke. Answer not before you have heard the cause, neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Strive not in a matter that concerns you not, and sit not in judgment with sinners. My son, meddle not with many matters, for if you meddle much, you shall not be innocent. And if you follow after, you shall not obtain, neither shall you escape by fleeing. There is one that labors, and takes pains, and makes haste, and is so much the more behind. Again, there is another that is slow, and has need of help, wanting ability, and full of poverty. Yet the eye of Yahuwah looked upon him for good, and set him up from his low estate, and lifted up his head from misery, so that many that saw from him is peace over all, prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches, come from Yahuwah. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Torah are of Yahuwah. Love and the way of good works are from him. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. And evil shall wax old with them that esteem therein. The gift of Yahuwah remains with the Kodoshim, and his favor brings prosperity forever. There is that waxes rich by his weariness and pension, and this is the portion of his reward. Whereas he says, I have found rest, and now will eat continually of my goods. And yet he knows not what time shall come upon him, and that he must leave those things to others, and die. Be steadfast in your covenant, and be conversant therein, and wax old in your work. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in Yahuwah, and abide in your labor. For it is an easy thing in the sight of Yahuwah on the sudden to make a poor man rich. The Baraka of Yahuwah is in the reward of the Kodesh, and suddenly he makes his Baraka flourish. Say not, What profit is there of my service, and what good thing shall I have hereafter? Again, say not, I have enough, and possess many things, and what evil shall I have thereafter? In the day of prosperity there is a forgetfulness of affliction, and in the day of affliction there is no more remembrance of prosperity. For it is an easy thing unto Yahuwah in the day of death to reward a man according to his works. The affliction of an hour makes a man forget pleasure, and in his end his deeds shall be discovered. Judge none Baruch before his death, for a man shall be known in his children. Bring not every man into your house, for the deceitful man has many trains. Like as partridge taken and kept in a cage, so is the heart of the proud, and like as a spy. He watches for your fall. For he lies in wait, and turns good into evil, and in things worthy of praise will they blame upon you. Of a spark of fire a heap of coals is kindled, and a sinful man lays wait for blood. Take heed of a mischievous man, for he works wickedness, lest he bring upon you a perpetual blot. Receive a stranger into your house, and he will disturb you, and turn you out of your own. When you would do good, know to whom you do it, so shall you be thanked for your benefits. Do good to the righteous man, and you shall find a recompense, and if not from him, yet from the Most High. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that gives no alms. Give to the righteous man, and help not a sinner. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the wicked. Hold back your bread, and give it not unto him lest he overmaster you thereby, for else you shall receive twice as much evil for all the good you shall have done unto him. For the Most High hates sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the wicked, and keeps them against the mighty day of their punishment. Give unto the good, and help not the sinner. A friend cannot be known in prosperity, and the enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. In the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved, but in his adversity, even a friend will depart. Never trust your enemy, for like as iron rusts, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself, 
and go crouching. Yet take good heed and beware of him, and you shall be unto him as if you had wiped a looking glass, and you shall know that his rust has not been altogether wiped away. Set him not by you, lest, when he has overthrown you, he stand up in your place, not to let him sit at your right hand, lest he seek to take your seat, and you at the last remember my words, and be pricked therewith. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or as any such as come near wild beasts? So one that goes to a sinner, and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? For a while he will abide with you, but if you begin to fall, he will not tarry. An enemy speaks sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagines how to throw you into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. If adversity come upon you, he shall find him there first, and though he pretend to help you, yet shall he undermine you. He will shake his head, and clap his hands, and whisper much, and change his countenance. He that touches pitch shall be defiled therewith, and he that has fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. Burden not yourself above your power while you live, and have no fellowship with one that is mightier and richer than yourself. For how agree the kettle and the earthen pot together? For if the one be smitten against the other, it shall be broken. The rich man has done wrong, and yet he threatens with all. The poor is wrong, and he must entreat also. If you be for his profit, he will use you, but if you have nothing, he will forsake you. If you have anything, he will live with you, yeah, he will make you bear, and will not be sorry for it. If he have need of you, he will deceive you, and smile upon you, and put you in hope. He will speak to you fair and say, What do you want? And he will shame you by his food, until he has drawn you dry twice or thrice. And at the last, he will laugh you to scorn afterward. When he sees you, he will forsake you and shake his head at you. Beware that you be not deceived and brought down in your rejoicing. If you be invited of a mighty man, withdraw yourself, and so much the more will he invite you. Press not upon him, lest you be put back. Stand not far off, lest you be forgotten. Affect not to be made equal unto him in talk, and believe not his many words. For with much communication will he tempt you, and smiling upon you will get out your secrets. But cruelly he will lay up your words, and will not spare to do you hurt, and to put you in prison. Observe, and take good heed, for you walk in peril of your overthrowing. When you hear these things, awaken your sleep. Love Yahuwah all your life, and call upon him for your deliverance. Every beast loves his own kind, and every man loves his neighbor. All flesh consorts according to its kind, and a man will cleave to his like. What fellowship has the wolf with the lamb, so the sinner with the righteous? What agreement is there between the hyena and a dog? And what peace between the rich and the poor? As the wild donkey is the lion's prey in the wilderness, so the rich eat up the poor. As the proud hate humility, so does the rich abhor the poor. A rich man beginning to fall is held up by his friends. But a poor man being down is thrust away by his friends. When a rich man is falling, he has many helpers. He speaks things not to be spoken, and yet men justify him. The poor man slipped, and yet they rebuked him too. He spoke wisely and could have no place. When a rich man speaks, every man holds his tongue. And look, what he says, they extol it to the clouds. But if a poor man speak, they say, What fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. Riches are good unto him that has no sin. And poverty is evil in the mouth of the wicked. The heart of a man changes his countenance, whether it be for good or evil. And a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. A cheerful countenance is a sign of a heart that is in prosperity. And the finding out of parables is a wearisome labor of the mind. Baruch is the man that has not slipped with his mouth and is not pricked with the multitude of sins. Baruch is he whose conscience has not condemned him and who is not fallen from his hope in Yahuwah. Riches are not comely for him who is ungenerous. And what should an envious man do with money? 
he that gathers by defrauding his own soul gathers for others that shall spend his goods riotously. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? He shall not take pleasure in his goods. There is none worse than he that envies himself, and this is a recompense of his wickedness. If he does good, he does it unwillingly, and at the last he will declare his wickedness. The envious man has a wicked eye. He turns away his face and despises men. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion, and the iniquity of the wicked dries up his soul. A wicked eye envies his bread, and he is ungenerous at his table. My son, according to your ability, do good to yourself, and give Yahuwah his due offering. Remember that death will not be long in coming, and that the covenant of Sheol is not showed unto you. Do good unto your friend before you die, and according to your ability, stretch out your hand and give to him. Defraud not yourself for the good day, and let not the part of a good desire overpass you. Shall you not leave your travails unto another, and your labors to be divided by lot? Give, and take, and kadosh your soul, for there is no seeking of dainties in Sheol. All flesh waxes old as a garment, for the covenant from the beginning is, you shall die to death. As of the green leaves on a thick tree, some fall and some grow. So is the generation of flesh and blood. One comes to an end, and another is born. Every work rots and consumes away, and the worker thereof shall go with all. Baruch is the man that meditates good things in wisdom, and that reasons on Kodesh things by his understanding. He that considers her ways in his heart shall also have understanding in her secrets. Go after her as one that traces, and lie in wait in her ways. He that pries in at her window shall also hearken at her doors. He that lodges near her house shall also fasten a pen in her walls. He shall pitch his tent nigh unto her, and shall lodge in a lodging where good things are. He shall set his children under her shelter, and shall lodge under her branches. By her he shall be covered from heat, and in her esteem shall he dwell. He that reveres Yahuwah will do good, and he that has the knowledge of the Torah shall obtain her. And as a mother shall she meet him, and receive him as a woman married of a virgin. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him, and give him the water of wisdom to drink. He shall be stayed upon her, and shall not be moved, and shall rely upon her, and shall not be confounded. She shall exalt him above his neighbors. And in the midst of the assembly she shall open his mouth. He shall find joy and a crown of gladness, and she shall cause him to inherit an everlasting name. But foolish men shall not attain unto her, and sinners shall not see her. For she is far from pride, and men that are liars cannot remember her. Praise is not seemly in the mouth of a sinner, for it was not sent him of Yahuwah. For praise shall be uttered in wisdom, and Yahuwah will prosper it. Say not, It is through Yahuwah that I fell away. For you ought not to do the things that he hates. Say not, He caused me to go astray. For he has no need of the sinful man. Yahuwah hates all abomination, and they that revere Elohim love it not. He himself made man from the beginning, and left him in the hand of his counsel. If you will, to guard the commandments, and to perform acceptable trustworthiness, he will set fire and water before you, stretch forth your hand unto whether you will. Before man is life and death, and whatever he likes shall be given to him. For the wisdom of Yahuwah is great, and he is mighty in power, and beholds all things. And his eyes are upon them that revere him, and he knows every work of man. He has commanded no man to do wickedly, Neither has he given any man license to sin. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children, neither delight in wicked sons. Though they multiply, rejoice not in them, except the reverence of Yahuwah be with them. Trust not in their life, neither respect their multitude, but one that is just is better than a thousand, and better it is to die without children than to have them that are wicked. For by one that has understanding shall the city be replenished, but the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate. Many such things have I seen with my eyes, and my ear has heard greater things than these. 
In the assembly of the wicked shall a fire be kindled, and in a rebellious nation wrath is set on fire. He was not pacified toward the Nephilim of old, who fell away in the strength of their foolishness. He neither spared the place where Lot sojourned, but abhorred them for their pride. He pitied not the people of perdition, who were taken away in their sins, nor the 600,000 footmen, who were gathered together in the hardness of their hearts. And if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is marvel if he escaped unpunished. For mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. As his mercy is great, so is his correction also. He judges a man according to his works. The sinner shall not escape with his spoils, and the patience of the righteous shall not be frustrated. Make way for every work of mercy, for every man shall find according to his works. Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh, that he should not know him, that his powerful works might be known to the world. His mercy is manifest to every creature, and he has separated his light from darkness with an adamant. Say not, I will hide myself from Yahuwah. Shall any remember me from above? I shall not be remembered among so many people. For what is my soul among such an infinite number of creatures? Behold, the Shamayim and the Shamayim of Shamayims, the deep and the earth and all that therein is, shall be moved when he shall visit. The mountains also and foundations of the earth be shaken with trembling when Yahuwah looks upon them. No heart can think upon these things worthily, and who is able to conceive his ways? It is a tempest which no man can see. For the most part of his works are hid. Who can declare the works of his justice? Or who can endure them? For his covenant is afar off, and the trial of all things is in the end. He that wants understanding will think upon vain things. And a foolish man going astray imagines follies. My son, hearken unto me, and learn knowledge, and mark my words with your heart. I will show forth doctrine and wait. And declare his knowledge exactly. The works of Yahuwah are done in judgment from the beginning. And from the time he made them, he disposed the parts thereof. He garnished his works forever. And in his hand are the chief of them unto all generations. They neither labor, nor are weary, nor cease from their works. None of them hinders another. And they shall never disobey his word. After this, Yahuwah looked upon the earth. And filled it with his baraka. With all manner of living things has he covered the face thereof, and they shall return into it again. Yahuwah created man of the earth, and turned him into it again. He gave them few days in a short time, and power also over the things therein. He endued them with strength by themselves, and made them according to his image, and put the fear of man upon all flesh and gave him dominion over beasts and fowls. They received the use of the five operations of Yahuwah, and in the sixth place he imparted them understanding, and in the seventh speech, an interpreter of the cogitations thereof, counsel, and a tongue, and eyes, ears, and a heart, gave he them to understand. Withal he filled them with the knowledge of understanding, and showed them good and evil. He set his eye upon their hearts, that he might show them the greatness of his works. He gave them to esteem in his marvelous acts forever, that they might declare his works with understanding. And the elect shall praise his Kodesh name. Beside this, he gave them knowledge, and the Torah of life for a heritage. He made an everlasting covenant with them, and showed them his judgments. Their eyes saw the majesty of his esteem, and their ears heard his esteemed voice. And he said unto them, Beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandments concerning his neighbor. Their ways are ever before him and shall not be hid from his eyes. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Neither could they make to themselves fleshy hearts for stony. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Yasharal is Yahuwah's portion, whom being his firstborn, he nourishes with discipline, and giving him the light of his love does not forsake him. Therefore all their works are as the sun before him, 
and his eyes are continually upon their ways. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him, but all their sins are before Yahuwah. But Yahuwah being compassionate and knowing his worksmanship, neither left nor forsook them, but spared them. The alms of a man is as a signet with him, and he will keep the good deeds of man as the apple of the eye, and gives repentance to his sons and daughters. Afterwards, he will rise up and reward them, and render their recompense upon their heads. But unto them that repent, he granted them return, and comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto Yahuwah, and forsake your sins, make your prayer before his face, and offend less. Turn again to the Most High, and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead you out of darkness into the light of health, and hate abomination vehemently. Who shall praise the Most High in Sheol, instead of them which live and give thanks? Thanksgiving perishes from the dead, as from one that is not. The living and sound in heart shall praise Yahuwah. How great is the loving kindness of Yahuwah our Elohim! And his compassion unto such as turn unto him in Kodesha. For all things cannot be in men, because the son of Adam is not immortal. What is brighter than the sun? Yet the light thereof fails, and flesh and blood will imagine evil. He views the power of the height of the Shamayim, and all men are but earth and ashes. He that lives forever has created all things in general. Yahuwah only is righteous, and there is none other but he, who governs the world with the palm of his hands, and all things obey his will, for he is the king of all, by his power dividing Kodesh things among them from profane. To whom has he given power to declare his works, and who shall find out his noble acts? Who shall number the strength of his majesty, and who shall also tell out his mercies? As for the wondrous works of Yahuwah, there may nothing be taken from them, neither may anything be put onto them, neither can the ground of them be found out. When a man has done, then he begins, and when he leaves off, then he shall be doubtful. What is man, and whereto serves he? What is his good, and what is his evil? The number of a man's days at the most are a hundred years. As a drop of water onto the sea, and a gravel stone in comparison of the sands, so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. Therefore is Elohim patient with them, and pours forth his mercy upon them. He saw and perceived their end to be evil. Therefore he multiplied his compassion. The mercy of man is toward his neighbor, but the mercy of Yahuwah is upon all flesh. He reproves and nurtures and teaches and brings again. As a shepherd his flock, he has mercy on them that receive discipline, and that diligently seek after his judgments. My son, blemish not your good deeds, neither use uncomfortable words when you give anything. Shall not the dew subside the heat, so is a word better than a gift. Lo, it's not a word better than a gift, but both are with a compassionate man. A fool will reproach rudely. And a gift of the envious consumes the eyes. Learn before you speak, and use physic or ever be sick. Before judgment, examine yourself, and in the day of visitation you shall find mercy. Humble yourself before you be sick, and in the time of sin show repentance. Let nothing hinder you to pay your vow in due time, and defer not until death to be justified. Before you pray, prepare yourself, and be not as one that tempts Yahuwah. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end, in the time of vengeance, when he shall turn away his face. When you have enough, remember the time of hunger, and when you are rich, think upon poverty and need. From the morning until the evening, the time is changed, and all things are soon done before Yahuwah. A wise man will fear in everything, and in the day of sinning he will be aware of offense, but a fool will not observe time. Every man of understanding knows wisdom, and will give praise unto him that founder. They that were of understanding in sayings become also wise themselves, and poured forth exquisite parables. Go not after your lusts, 
but refrain yourself from your appetites. If you give your soul the desires that please her, she will make you a laughing stock to your enemies that malign you. Take not pleasure in much good cheer, neither be tied to the expense thereof. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing, when you have nothing in your wallet, for you shall lie in wait for your own life, and be talked on. A laboring man that is given to drunkenness shall not be rich, and he that contemns small things shall fall by little and little. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away, and he that cleaves to harlots will become impudent. Moths and worms shall have him to heritage, and a bold man shall be taken away. He that is hasty to get credit is light-minded, and he that sins shall offend against his own soul. Whoso takes pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resists pleasures crowns his life. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hates babbling shall have less evil. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto you, and you shall fare never the worse. Whether it be to a friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives, and if you can without offense, reveal them not. For he heard and observed you, and when time comes he will hate you. If you have a word, let it die with you, and be bold, it will not burst you. A fool travails with a word, as a woman in labor of a child, as an arrow that sticks in a man's thigh, so is a word within a fool's belly. Admonish a friend, it may be he has not done it, and if he have done it, that he do it no more. Admonish a friend, it may be he has not said it, and if he have, that he speak it not again. Admonish a friend, for many times it is a slander, and believe not every tale. There is one that slips in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that has not offended with his tongue? Admonish your neighbor before you threaten him, and not being angry, give place to the Torah of the Most High. The fear of Yahuwah is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtains his love. The knowledge of the commandments of Yahuwah is the doctrine of life, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruits of the tree of immortality. The reverence of Yahuwah is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the Torah and the knowledge of his omnipotency. If a servant say to his master, I will not do as it pleases you, though afterward he do it, he angers him that nourishes him. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom, neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence. There is a wickedness, and the same in abomination, and there is a full wanton in wisdom. He that has small understanding, and reveres Elohim, is better than one that has much wisdom, and transgresses the Torah of the Most High. There is an exquisite subtility, and the same is unjust, and there is one that turns aside to make judgment appear, and there is a wise man that justifies in judgment. There is a wicked man that hangs down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit, casting down his countenance, and making as if he heard not. Where he is not known, he will do you a mischief before you be aware. And if for want of power he be hindered from sinning, yet when he finds opportunity he will do evil. A man may be known by his look, and one that has understanding by his countenance when you meet him. A man's attire, and excessive laughter, and walk, show what he is. There is a reproof that is not calmly. Again, some man holds his tongue, and he is wise. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly, and he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt. How good is it, when you are reproved, to show repentance, for so shall you escape willful sin. As is the lust of a eunuch to deflower a virgin, so is he that executes judgment with violence. There is one that keeps silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling becomes hateful. Some man holds his tongue, because he has not to answer, and some keep silence knowing his time. A wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity, but a babbler and a fool will regard no time. He that uses many words shall be abhorred, and he that takes to himself authority therein shall be hated. There is a sinner that has good success in evil things, and there is a gain that turns to loss. There is a gift that shall not profit you, 
and there is a gift whose recompense is double. There is an abasement because of esteem, and there is that lifts up his head from a low estate. There is that buys much for a little, and it repays it sevenfold. A wise man by his words makes him beloved, but the compassion of fools shall be poured out. The gift of the fool shall do you no good when you have it, neither yet of the envious for his necessity, for he looks to receive many things for one. He gives little and upbraids much. He opens his mouth like a crier. Today he lends, and tomorrow will he ask it again. Such one is to be hated of Elohim and man. The fool says, I have no friends. I have no thank for all my good deeds. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. How oft and of how many shall he be laughed to scorn? For he knows not a right what it is to have. And it is all one unto him as if he had it not. To slip upon a pavement is better than to slip with the tongue. So the fall of the wicked shall come speedily. An unseasonable tale will always be in the mouth of the unwise. A wise sentence shall be rejected when it comes out of a fool's mouth, but he will not speak it in due season. There is one that is hindered from sinning through want, and when he takes rest, he shall not be troubled. There is one that destroys his own soul through bashfulness, and by accepting a person overthrows himself. There is one that for bashfulness promises to his friend, and makes him his enemy for nothing. A lie is a foul blot in a man, yet it is continually in the mouth of the untaught. A thief is better than a man that is accustomed to lie, but they both shall have destruction to heritage. The disposition of a liar is dishonorable, and his shame is ever with him. A wise man shall promote himself to honor with his words, and he that has understanding will please great men. He that tills his land shall increase his heap. And he that pleases great men shall get pardon for iniquity. Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise and stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. Wisdom that is hid and treasure that is hoarded up. What profit is in them both? Better is he that hides his folly than a man that hides his wisdom. Necessary patience in seeking Yahuwah is better than he that leads his life without a guide. My son, have you sinned? Do so no more, but ask pardon for your former sins. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent, for if you come too near it, it will bite you. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. All iniquity is as a two-edged sword, and wounds whereof cannot be healed. To terrify and do wrong will waste riches, thus the house of proud men shall be made desolate. A prayer out of a poor man's mouth reaches to the ears of Elohim, and his judgment comes speedily. He that hastes to be reproved is in the way of sinners, but he that reveres Yahuwah will repent from his heart. An eloquent man is known far and near, but a man of understanding knows when he slips. He that builds his house with other men's money is like one that gathers himself stones for the tomb of his burial. The assembly of the wicked is like tow wrapped together, and the end of them is a flame of fire to destroy them. The way of sinners is made plain with stones, but at the end thereof is the pit of Sheol. He that keeps the Torah of Yahuwah gets the understanding thereof, and the perfection of the fear of Yahuwah is wisdom. He that is not wise will not be taught, but there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood, and his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. The inward parts of a fool are like a broken vessel, and he will hold no knowledge as long as he lives. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add on to it. But as soon as one of no understanding hears it, it displeases him, and he casts it behind his back. The talking of a fool is like a burden in a way, but favor shall be found in the lips of the wise. They inquire at the mouth of the wise man in the assembly, and they shall ponder his words in their heart. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool, and the knowledge of the unwise is as taught without sense. Doctrine unto fools is as fetters on the feet, and like manacles on the right hand. A fool lifts up his voice with laughter, 
but a wise man scarcely smiles a little. Learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold, and like a bracelet upon his right arm. A foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house, but a man of experience is ashamed of him. A fool will peep in at the door into the house, but he that is well nurtured will stand without. It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door, but a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them, but the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. When the wicked curses Satan, he curses his own soul. A whisperer defiles his own soul, and he is hated wheresoever he dwells. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone, and everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. An evil nurtured man is the dishonor of his father that begat him, and a foolish daughter is born to his loss. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband, but she that lives dishonestly is her father's heaviness. She that is bold dishonors both her father and her husband, but they both shall despise her. A tale out of season is as music in mourning, but stripes and correction of wisdom are never out of time. Whoso teaches a fool is as one that glues a potsherd together, and as he that wakens one from a sound sleep. He that tells a tale to a fool speaks to one in a slumber. When he has told his tale, he will say, What is the matter? If children live honestly and have resources, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. But children, being haughty, through disdain and once a nurture, do stain the nobility of their kindred. Weep for the dead, for he has lost the light. And weep for the fool, for he wants understanding. Make little weeping for the dead, for he is at rest. But the life of a fool is worse than death. Seven days do men mourn for him that is dead. But for a fool and a wicked man all the days of his life. Talk not much with a fool, and go not to him that has no understanding. Beware of him, lest you have trouble, and you shall never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him, and you shall find rest, and never be disquieted with madness. What is heavier than lead, and what is the name thereof but a fool? Sand, and salt, and a mass of iron is easier to bear than a man without understanding. As timber girt and bound together, in a building that cannot be loosed with shaking, so the heart that is established by a wise counsel shall fear in no time. A heart settled upon a thought of understanding is as a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. Pale set on a high place will never stand against the wind, so a fearful heart in the imagination of a fool cannot stand against any fear. He that pricks the eye will make tears to fall, and he that pricks the heart makes it show her knowledge. Whoso casts a stone at the birds frays them away, and he that reproaches his friend breaks friendship. Though you drew a sword at your friend, yet despair not, for there may be a return into favor. If you have opened your mouth against your friend, fear not, for there may be a reconciliation, except for reproach or pride or disclosing the secrets or a treacherous wound. For these things every friend will depart. Be trustworthy to your neighbor in his poverty, that you may rejoice in his prosperity. Abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble, that you may be heir with him in his heritage. For a mean estate is not always to be contemned, nor the rich that is foolish to be had in admiration. As the vapor and smoke of a furnace goes before the fire, so reviling before blood. I will not be ashamed to defend a friend, neither will I hide myself from him. If any evil happen unto me by him, everyone that hears it will beware of him. Who shall set a watch before my mouth, and a seal of wisdom upon my lips, that I fall not suddenly by them, and that my tongue destroy me not? O Yahuwah, Father and Governor of all my whole life, lead me not to their counsels, and let me not fall by them. Who will set scourges over my thoughts, and the discipline of wisdom over my heart? 
that they spare me not for my ignorances, and it pass not by my sins, lest my ignorances increase, and my sins abound to my destruction, and I fall before my adversaries, and my enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far from your mercy. O Yahuwah, Father, and the Elohim of my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from your servants always a haughty mind. Turn away from me vain hopes and lusting, and you shall hold him up that is desirous always to serve you. Let not the greediness of the belly, nor the lust of the flesh take hold of me, and give not over me your servant into an impudent mind. Hear, O ye children, the discipline of the mouth. He that keeps it shall never be taken in his lips. The sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Accustom not your mouth to swearing, neither use yourself to the naming of the kadosh one. For as a servant that is continually beaten shall not be without a blue mark, so he that swears in names of Elohim continually shall not be faultless. A man that uses much swearing shall be filled with wickedness, and the plague shall never depart from his house. If he shall offend, his sins shall be upon him. And if he acknowledge not his sin, he makes a double offense. And if he swear in vain, he shall not be innocent, but his house shall be full of calamities. There is a word that is clothed about with death. Elohim grant that it not be found in the heritage of Yaakov. For all such things shall be far from the righteous, and they shall not wallow in their sins. Use not your mouth to intemperate swearing, for therein is the word of sin. Remember your father and your mother. When you sit among great men, be not forgetful before them. And so you by your custom become a fool, in which that you had not been born, and curse the day of your nativity. The man that is accustomed to abusive words will never be reformed all the days of his life. Two sorts of men multiply sin, and the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it be consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he has kindled a fire. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he die. A man that commits adultery says thus in his heart, Who sees me? I'm compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody sees me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. Such a man only fears the eyes of men. And knows not that the eyes of Yahuwah are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. He knew all things go astray ever since they were created, so also after they were perfected he looked upon them all. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city, and where he suspects not he shall be taken. Thus shall it go also with the woman that leaves her husband, and brings in the air by another, for first, she has disobeyed the Torah of the Most High, and secondly, she has trespassed against her own husband, and thirdly, she has played the whore and committed adultery, and brought children by another man. She shall be brought out into the assembly, and inquisition shall be made of her children. Her children shall not take root, and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. She shall leave her memory to be cursed, and her reproach shall not be blotted out. And they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of Yahuwah, and that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of Yahuwah. It is great esteem to follow Yahuwah, and to be received of him is long life. Wisdom shall praise herself, and shall esteem in the midst of her people. In the assembly of the Most High shall she open her mouth, and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwell in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. I alone compassed the circuit of the Shamayim and walked in the bottom of the deep, in the waves of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation. I got a possession. With all these I sought rest and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me cause my tabernacle to rest and said, Let your dwelling be in Yaakov.
and your inheritance in Yasharal. He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. In the Kodesh Tabernacle, I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of Yahuwah's inheritance. I was exalted like cedar in Lebanon, and as a cypress tree upon the mountains of Shermon. I was exalted like a palm tree in Angadi, and as a rose plant in Jericho, as a fair olive tree in a pleasant field, and grew up as a plain tree by the water. I gave a sweet smell like cinnamon and asphalopus, and I yielded a pleasant odor like the best myrrh, as galbanum and onyx and sweet storax, and as the fume of frankincense in the tabernacle. As the turpentine tree, I stretched out my branches, and my branches are the branches of honor and favor. As the vine brought my forth pleasant savor, and my flowers are the fruit of honor and riches. I am the mother of fair love and fear and knowledge and Kodesh hope. I therefore, being eternal, am given to all my children, which are named of him. Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourselves with my fruit. For my memorial is sweeter than honey, and my inheritance than the honeycomb. They that eat me shall yet be hungry, and they that drink me shall yet be thirsty. He that obeys me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. All these things are the cipher of the covenant of the Most High, even the Torah which Moshe commanded for heritage unto the assemblies of Yaakov. Faint not to be strong in Yahuwah, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for Yahuwah Sabaoth is Eluahim alone, and beside him there is no other Savior. He fills all things with his wisdom, as Pishon and Shedeko in the time of the new fruit. He makes the understanding to abound like Parath, and as a yardin in the time of the harvest. He makes the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light, and as Gishon in the time of vintage. The first man knew her not perfectly, no more shall the last find her out. For her thoughts are more than the sea, and her counsels profounder than the great deep. I also came out as a brook from a river, and as a conduit into a garden. I said, I will water my best garden, and will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook became a river, and my river became a sea. I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning, and will send forth her light afar off. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy, and leave it to all ages forever. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. In three things I was beautified, and stood up beautiful both before Elohim and men, the unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, and the husband and wife that agree together. Three sorts of men my soul hates, and I am greatly offended at their life, a poor man that is proud, a rich man that is a liar, and an old man that breaks wedlock, that dotes. If you have gathered nothing in your youth, how can you find anything in your age? Oh, how calmly a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to no counsel. Oh, how calmly is the wisdom of old men and understanding and counsel to men of honor. Much experience is the crown of old men and the fear of Elohim is their esteem. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that has joy of his children and he that lives to see the fall of his enemy. Well is him that dwells with a woman of understanding, and that has not slipped with his tongue, and that has not served a man more unworthy than himself. Well is him that has found prudence, and he that speaks in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that finds wisdom, yet is there none above him that reveres Yahuwah. But the love of Yahuwah passes all things for illumination. 
he that holds it, whereto shall he be likened? The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of his love, and belief is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman, and any affliction but the affliction from them that hate me, and any revenge but the revenge of enemies. There is no head above the head of a serpent, and there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkens her countenance like a sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he hears it, shall sigh bitterly. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. As the climbing up a sandy way is the feet of the elderly, so is a woman full of words to a quiet man. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman, and desire her not for pleasure. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. A wicked woman decreases courage, makes a heavy countenance, and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress makes weak hands and feeble knees. Other woman came the beginning of sin. And through her we all die. Give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. If she go not as you would have her, cut her off from your flesh, and give her a letter of divorce, and let her go. Baruch is the man that has a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. A virtuous wife rejoices her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. A good woman is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that revere Yahuwah. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart towards Yahuwah, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. There be three things that my heart fears, and for the fourth I was sore afraid, the slander of a city, the gathering together of an unruly multitude, and a false accusation. All these are worse than death. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman, and is scourge of the tongue which communicates with all. An evil woman is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that has hold of her is as though he has held a scorpion. A drunken woman and a gather abroad causes great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. If your daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, that she abuse herself through too much liberty. Watch over an impudent eye, and don't marvel if she transgress against you. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain, and drink of every water near her, by every hedge will she sit down, and open a quiver against every arrow. The compassion of a woman delights her husband and her discretion will fatten his bones. A silent and loving woman is a gift of Yahuwah, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. A shamefaced and trustworthy woman is a double gift, and her continent mind cannot be valued. As the sun when it arises in the high Shamayim, so is the beauty of a good woman in the ordering of her house. As the clear light is upon the Kodesh menorah, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. As the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver, so are the fair feet with a constant heart. My son, keep the flower of your age sound, and give not your strength to strangers. When you have gotten a fruitful possession through all your field, sow it with your own seed, trusting in the goodness of your stock. So your race which you leave shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good descent. A harlot shall be accounted as spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a righteous woman is given to him that fears Yahuwah. A dishonest woman contemns shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. 
A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will revere Yahuwah. A woman that honors her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonors him in her pride shall be counted wicked of all. A loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought out to drive away the enemies. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third makes me angry. A man of war that suffers poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returns from righteousness to sin. Yahuwah prepares such one for the sword. A merchant shall hardly keep himself from doing wrong, and a huckster shall not be free from sin. Many have sinned for a small matter, and he that seeks for abundance will turn his eyes away. As a nail sticks fast between the joints of the stones, so does sin stick close between buying and selling. Unless a man hold himself diligently in the reverence of Yahuwah, his house shall soon be overthrown. As when one sifts with a sieve, the refuge remains, so the filth of man in his talk. The furnace proves the potter's vessels, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. The fruit declares that the tree has been dressed, so is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. Praise no man before you hear him speak, for this is the trial of men. If you follow righteousness, you shall obtain her and put her on, as an esteemed long robe. The birds will resort unto their like. So would truth return unto them that practice in her. As the lion lies in wait for the prey, so sin for them that work iniquity. The discourse of a righteous man is always with wisdom, but a fool changes as the moon. If you be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. The discourse of fools is irksome, and their sport is the wantonness of sin. The talk of him that swears much makes the hair stand upright, and their brawls make one stop his ears. The strife of the proud is bloodshedding, and their revilings are grievous to the ear. Whoso discovers secrets loses his credit, and shall never find friend to his mind. Love your friend, and be trustworthy unto him. But if you betray his secrets, follow no more after him. For as a man has destroyed his enemy, so have you lost the love of your neighbor. As one that lets a bird go out of his hand, so have you let your neighbor go, and shall not get him again. Follow after him no more, for he is too far off. He is as a roe escaped out of the snare. As for a wound, it may be bound up, and after reviling there may be recouncilment. But he that betrays secrets is without hope. He that winks with the eyes works evil. And he that knows him will depart from him. When you are present, he will speak sweetly and will admire your words. But at the last, he will writhe his mouth and slander your sayings. I have hated many things, but nothing like him, for Yahuwah will hate him. Whoso casts a stone on high, casts it on his own head, and a deceitful stroke shall make wounds. Whoso digs a pit shall fall therein, and he that sets a trap shall be taken therein. He that works mischief, it shall fall upon him, and he shall not know whence it comes. Mockery and reproach are from the proud, but vengeance as a lion shall lie in wait for them. They that rejoice at the fall of the righteous shall be taken in the snare, and anguish shall consume them before they die. Malice and wrath, even these are abominations, and the sinful man shall have them both. He that revenges shall find vengeance from Yahuwah, and he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Forgive your neighbor the hurt that he has done unto you, so shall your sins also be forgiven when you pray. One man bears hatred against another, and he seeks pardon from Yahuwah. He shows no mercy to a man, which is like himself, and he asks forgiveness of his own sins. If he that is but flesh nourish hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Remember your end, and let enmity cease. Remember corruption and death, and abide in the commandments. Remember the commandments, and bear no malice to your neighbor. 
Remember the covenant of the Most High and wink at ignorance. Abstain from strife and you shall diminish your sins. For a furious man will kindle strife. A sinful man disquiets friends. It makes debates among them that be at peace. As the matter of the fire is, so it burns. And as a man's strength is, so is his wrath. And according to his riches, his anger rises. And the stronger they are which contend, the more they will be in flames. A hasty contention kindles a fire. And a hasty fighting sheds blood. If you blow the spark, it shall burn. If you spit upon it, it shall be quenched. And both these come out of your mouth. Curse the whisperer and double-tongued, for such have destroyed many that were at peace. A backbiting tongue has disquieted many and driven them from nation to nation. Strong cities has it pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. A backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labors. Whoso hearkens unto it shall never find rest and never dwell quietly. The stroke of the whip makes marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaks the bones. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many has fallen by the tongue. Well is he that is defended through the venom thereof, who has not drawn the yoke thereof, nor has been bound in her bands. For the yoke thereof is a yoke of iron, and the bands thereof are bands of brass. The death thereof is an evil death, she all were better than it. It shall not have rule over them that revere Elohim, neither shall they be burned with the flame thereof. Such as forsake Yahuwah shall fall into it, and it shall burn in them, and not be quenched. It shall be sent upon them as a lion, and devoured them as a leopard. Look that you had your possession about with thorns, and bind up your silver and gold, and weigh your words in a balance, and make a door and bar for your mouth. But where you slide not by it, lest you fall before him that lies in wait. He that is merciful will lend unto his neighbor, and he that strengthens his hand keeps the commandments. Lend to your neighbor in time of his need, and pay your neighbor again in due season. Keep your word, and deal trustworthily with him, and you shall always find a thing that is necessary for you. Many, when a thing was lent them, Reckoned it to be found, and put them to trouble that helped them. Till he has received, he will kiss a man's hand, and for his neighbor's money he will speak submissively. But when he shall repay, he will prolong the time, and return words of grief, and complain of the time. If he prevail, he shall hardly receive the half, and he will count as if he had found it. If not, he has deprived him of his money, and he has gotten him an enemy without cause. He pays him with curses and railings, and for honor he will pay him disgrace. Many therefore have refused to lend for other men's ill dealing, fearing to be defrauded. Yet have you patience with a man in poor estates, and delay not to show him mercy. Help the poor for the commandment's sake, and turn him not away because of his poverty. Lose your money for your brother and your friends, and let it not rust under a stone to be lost. Lay up your treasure according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring you more profit than gold. Shut up arms in your storehouses, and it shall deliver you from all affliction. It shall fight for you against your enemies better than a mighty shield and strong spear. An honest man is surety for his neighbor, but he that is impudent will forsake him. Forget not the friendship of your surety, for he has given his life for you. A sinner will overthrow the good estate of his surety, and he that is of an unthankful mind will leave him in danger that delivered him. Suretyship has undone many of good estates, and shaken them as a wave of the sea. Mighty men has it driven from their houses, so that they wandered among strange nations. A wicked man transgressing the commandments of Yahuwah shall fall into suretyship. And he that undertakes and follows other men's business for gain shall fall in the suits. Help your neighbor according to your power, and beware that you yourself fall not into the same. The chief thing for life is water, and bread, and clothing, and a house to cover shame. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage than delicate fare in another man's house. Be it little or much, 
hold you contented, that you hear not the reproach of your house. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house, for where you are a stranger, you dare not open your mouth. You shall entertain, and feast, and have no thanks. Moreover, you shall hear bitter words. Come, you stranger, and furnish the table, and feed me of that you have ready. Give place, you stranger, to an honorable man. My brother comes to be lodged, and I have need of my house. These things are grievous to a man of understanding, the upbraiding of house room, and reproaching of the lender. He that loves his son causes him oft to fill the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him, and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. He that teaches his son grieves the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Though his father die, he is as though he were not dead, for he has left one behind him that is like himself. While he lives, he saw and rejoiced in him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies, and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. He that makes too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his heart will be troubled at every cry. A horse not broken becomes headstrong, and a child left to himself will be willful. Pamper your child, and he shall make you afraid. Play with him, and he will bring you to heaviness. Laugh not with him, lest you have sorrow with him, and lest you gnash your teeth in the end. Give him no liberty in his youth, and wink not at his follies. Bow down his neck while he is young, and beat him on the sides while he is a child, lest he wax stubborn, and be disobedient unto you, and so bring sorrow to your heart. Chastise your son, and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto you. Better is the poor, being sound and strong a constitution, than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Health and good estate of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. There is no riches above a sound body, and no joy above the joy of the heart. Death is better than a bitter life, or continual sickness. Delicates poured upon a mouth shut up are as messes of meat set upon a grave. What good does the offering unto an idol? For neither can it eat nor smell. So is he that is persecuted of Yahuwah. He sees with his eyes and groans as a eunuch that embraces a virgin and sighs. Give not your mind to heaviness and afflict not yourself in your own counsel. The gladness of the heart is the life of man and the joyfulness of a man prolongs his days. Love your own soul and comfort your heart. Remove sorrow far from you, for sorrow has killed many, and there is no profit therein. Envy and wrath shorten the life, and carefulness brings age before the time. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Watching for riches consumes the flesh, and the care thereof drives away sleep. Watching care will not let a man slumber, as a sore disease breaks sleep. The rich has great labor in gathering riches together, and when he rests, he is filled with his delicates. The poor labors in his poor state, and when he leaves off, he is still needy. He that loves gold shall not be justified, and he that follows corruption shall have enough thereof. Gold has been the ruin of many, and their destruction was present. It is a stumbling block unto them that sacrifice unto it, and every fool shall be taken therewith. Baruch is the rich that is found without blemish, and has not gone after gold. Who is he? And we will call him Baruch, for wonderful things has he done among his people. Who has been tried thereby, and found perfect, then let him esteem? Who might offend, and has not offended, or done evil, and has not done it? His good shall be established, and the assembly shall declare his arms. If you sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it. And say not, there is much food on it. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. And what is created more wicked than an eye? Therefore it weeps upon every occasion. Stretch not your hand whatsoever it looks. And thrust it not with him into the dish. Judge not your neighbor by yourself. And be discreet in every point. 
eat as it becomes a man, those things which are set before you, and devour not, lest you be hated. Leave all first for manner's sake, and be not unsatiable, lest you offend. When you sit among many, reach not your hand out first of all. If very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetches not his wind short upon his bed. Sound sleep comes of moderate eating. He rises early, and his wits are with him. But the pain of watching, and colder, and pangs of the belly, are with an unsatiable man. And if you have been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and you shall have rest. My son, hear me, and despise me not, and at the last you shall find as I told you. In all your works be quick, so shall there no sickness come on to you. Whoso is liberal of his meat, men shall speak well of him, and the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. But against him that is ungenerous of his meat, the whole city shall murmur. And the testimonies of his stinginess shall not be doubted of. Show not your valiantness in wine, for wine has destroyed many. The furnace proves the edge by dipping, so does wine the hearts of the proud by drunkenness. Wine is good as life to a man if it be drunk moderately. What life is then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. Wine measurably drunk and in season brings gladness of the heart and cheerfulness of the mind. But wine drunken with excess makes bitterness of the mind with brawling and quarreling. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offends. It diminishes strength. It makes wounds. Rebuke not your neighbor at the wine. And despise him not in his mirth. Give him no despiteful words. And press not upon him with urging him to drink. If you be made the master of a feast, lift not yourself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Take diligent care for them, and so sit down. And when you have done all your office, take your place, that you may be merry with them, and receive a crown for your well ordering of the feast. Speak, you that are the elder, for it becomes you, but with sound judgment, and hinder not music. Do not pour out words where there is a musician, and show not forth wisdom out of time. A concert of music in a banquet of wine is as a signet of a carbuncle set in gold. As a signet of an emerald set in a work of gold, so is the melody of music with pleasant wine. Speak, young man. If there be need of you, and yet scarcely when you are twice asked, let your speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knows and yet holds his tongue. If you be among great men, make not yourself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. Before thunder goes lightning, and before a shamefaced man shall go favor. Rise up early, and be not the last, but get you home without delay. There take your pastime, and do what you will, but sin not by proud speech. And for these things, Barak him that made you, and has replenished you with his good things. Whoso reveres Yahuwah will receive his discipline, and they that seek him early shall find favor. He that seeks the Torah shall be filled with it, but the hypocrite will be offended by it. They that revere Yahuwah shall find judgment, and shall kindle justice as a light. A sinful man will not be reproved, but finds an excuse according to his will. A man of counsel will be considerate, but a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear, even when of himself he has done without counsel. Do nothing without advice, and when you have done once, repent not. Go not in the way wherein you may fall, and stumble not among the stones. Be not confident in a plain way, and beware of your own children. In every good work, trust your own soul, for this is the keeping of the commandments. He that believes in Yahuwah takes heed to the commandments, and he that trusts in him shall fare never the worse. There shall no evil happen unto him that fears Yahuwah, but in temptation even again he will deliver him. A wise man hates not the Torah. But he that is a hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. A man of understanding trusts in the Torah. And the Torah is trustworthy unto him as an oracle. Prepare what to say, and so you shall be heard. 
and bind up instruction, and then make answer. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel, and his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. A stallion horse is as a mocking friend. He neighs under everyone that sits upon him. Why does one day excel another, when as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun? By the knowledge of Yahuwah, they were distinguished, and he altered seasons and feasts. Some of them has he made high days, and kadosh them, and some of them has he made ordinary days. And all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of earth. And much knowledge Yahuwah has divided them, and made their ways diverse. Some of them has he baruch and exalted, and some of them he kadosh, and sat near himself. But some of them has he cursed and brought low, and turned out of their places. As the clay is in the potter's hand, to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him, to render to them as likes him best. Good is set against evil, and life against death. So is the righteous against the sinner, and the sinner against the righteous. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. I awakened up last of all, as one that gathers after the grape gatherers. By the Baraka of Yahuwah, I profited, and tread my winepress like a gatherer of grapes. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the assembly. Give not your son and wife, your brother and friend, power over you while you live, and give not your goods to another, lest it grieve you and you entreat for the same again. As long as you live and have breath in you, give not yourself over to any. For better it is that your children should see to you than that you should stand to their courtesy. In all your works, keep to yourself the preeminence. Leave not a stain in your honor. At the time when you shall end your days and finish your life, distribute your inheritance. Fodder, a wand, and burdens are for the donkey, and bread, correction, and work for a servant. If you set your servant to labor, you shall find rest. But if you let him go idle, he shall seek liberty. A yoke and a collar do bow the neck. So are tortures and torments for an evil servant. Send him to labor, that he be not idle, for idleness teaches much evil. Set him to work, as is fit for him. If he be not obedient, put on more heavy fetters. But be not excessive toward any, and without discretion do nothing. If you have a servant, let him be on to you as yourself, because you have bought him with a price. If you have a servant... And treat him as a brother, for you have need of him, as of your own soul. If you entreat him evil, and he run from you, which way will you go to seek him? The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false. And dreams lift up fools. Whoso regards dreams is like him that catches at a shadow, and follows after the winds. The vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another even as the likeness of a face to a face. Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? And from that thing which is false, what truth can come? Divinations and soothsayings and dreams are vain. And the heart fancies, as a woman's heart in travail, if they be not sent from the Most High in your visitation, set not your hearts upon them. For dreams have deceived many, and they have failed that put their trust in them. The Torah shall be found perfect without lies, and wisdom is perfection to a trustworthy mouth. A man that has traveled knows many things, and he that has much experience will declare wisdom. He that has no experience knows little, but he that has traveled is full of prudence. When I traveled, I saw many things, and I understand more than I can express. I was oft times in danger of death, yet I was delivered because of these things. The Ruach of those that revered Yahuwah shall live, for their hope is in him that saves them. Whoso reveres Yahuwah shall not fear nor be afraid, for he is his expectation. Baruch is the soul of him that reveres Yahuwah. To whom does he look, and who is his strength? For the eyes of Yahuwah are upon them that love him. 
He is their mighty protection and strong stay, a defense from heat and a cover from the sun and noon, a preservation from stumbling and a help from falling. He raises up the soul and lightens the eyes. He gives health, life and baraka. He that sacrifices of a thing wrongfully gotten, his offering is ridiculous and the gifts of the unjust men are not accepted. The Most High is not pleased with the offerings of the wicked. Neither is he pacified for sin by the multitude of sacrifices. Whoso brings an offering of the goods of the poor does as one that kills the son before his father's eyes. The bread of the needy is their life. He that defrauds him thereof is a man of blood. He that takes away his neighbor's living slays him. And he that defrauds the laborer of his hire is a bloodshedder. When one builds and another pulls down, what profit have they then but labor? When one prays and another curses, whose voice will you who will hear? He that washes himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what avails his washing? So is it with a man that fasts for his sins and goes again and does the same. Who will hear his prayer? Or what does his humbling profit him? He that keeps the Torah brings offerings enough. He that takes heed to the commandment offers a peace offering. He that requites a good turn offers fine flour. And he that gives alms sacrifices praise. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to Yahuwah. And to forsake unrighteousness is an atonement. You shall not appear empty before Yahuwah. For all these things are to be done because of the commandments. The offering of the righteous makes the altar fat, and the sweet savor therefore is before the Most High. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Give Yahuwah his honor with a good eye, and diminish not the first fruit of your hands. In all your gifts show a cheerful countenance, and dedicate your tithes with gladness. Give unto the Most High according as he has enriched you, and as you have gotten, Give with a cheerful eye, for you who recompenses and will give you seven times as much. Do not think to corrupt with gifts, for such he will not receive. And trust not to unrighteous sacrifices, for you who is judge, and with him is no respect to persons. He will not accept any person against a poor man, but will hear the prayer of the oppressed. He will not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow. When she pours out her complaints, do not the tears run down the widow's cheeks and is not her cry against him that causes them to fall. He that serves you shall be accepted with favor and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds until it come nigh. He will not be comforted and will not depart till the most high shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment for you will not be slack. Neither will all be patient toward them till he have smitten and sundered the loins of the unmerciful and repaid vengeance to the heathen till he have taken away the multitude of the proud and broken the scepter of the unrighteous till he have rendered to every man according to his deeds and to the works of men according to their devices till he have judged the cause of his people and made them to rejoice in his mercy. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. As clouds of rain in a time of drought. Have mercy upon us, O Yahuwah Elohim of all, and behold us, and send your fear upon all the nations that seek not after you. Lift up your hand against the strange nations, and let them see your power. As you were kadosh in us before them, so be magnified among them before us, and let them know you. As we have known you, that there is no Elohim but only you, O Elohim. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Esteem your hand and your right arm, that they may set forth your wondrous works. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare your wonderful works. Let him that escapes be consumed by the rage of the fire, and let them perish that oppress the people. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, There is no other but we. 
Gather all the tribes of Yaakov together and inherit them as from the beginning. O oh, Yahuwah, have mercy upon the people that is called by your name and upon Yasharal whom you had named your firstborn. O oh, be merciful unto Jerusalem, your Kodesh city, the place of your rest. Fill Sion with your unspeakable oracles and your people with your esteem. Give testimony unto those that you have possessed from the beginning. And raise up prophets that have been in your name. Reward them that wait for you. And let your prophets be found trustworthy. O oh, Yahuwah, hear the prayer of your servants. According to the Baraka of Aharon over your people. That all they which dwell upon the earth may know that you are Yahuwah. The eternal Elohim. The belly devours all meats. Yet is one meat better than another. As the palate tastes diverse kinds of venison. So does a heart of understanding false speeches. A froward heart causes heaviness, but a man of experience will recompense him. A woman will receive every man, yet is one daughter better than another. The beauty of a woman cheers the countenance, and a man loves nothing better. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, then her husband is not like other men. He that gets a wife begins a possession. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. And he that has no wife will wander up and down mourning. Who will trust a thief well appointed that skips from city to city? So who will believe a man that has no house and lodges wheresoever the night takes him? Every friend says, I'm his friend also. But there is a friend, which is only a friend in name. Is it not a grief unto death, when a companion and friend is turned to an enemy? O oh, wicked imagination, whence came you to cover the earth with deceit? There is a companion, which rejoices in the prosperity of a friend, but in the time of trouble will be against him. There is a companion, which helps his friend for the belly, and takes up the buckler against the enemy. Forget not your friend in your mind, and be not unmindful of him in your riches. Every counselor extols counsel, but there is some that counsels for himself. Beware of a counselor, and know before what need he has, but he will counsel for himself, lest he cast a lot upon you, and say unto you, Your way is good. And afterward he stand on the other side, to see what shall befall you. Consult not with one that suspects you, and hide your counsel from such as envy you. Neither consult with a woman touching her on whom she is jealous, neither with a coward in matters of war, nor with a merchant concerning exchange, nor with a buyer of selling, nor with an envious man of thankfulness, nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness, nor with the slothful for any work, nor with a hireling for a year of finishing work, nor with an idle servant of much business, Hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel, but be continually with a righteous man, whom you know to guard the commandments of Yahuwah, whose mind is according to your mind, and will sorrow with you, if you shall miscarry. And let the counsel of your own heart stand, for there is no man more trustworthy unto you than it. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen, that sit above in a high tower, and above all this, Pray to the Most High that he will direct your way in truth. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. The countenance is a sign of changing of the heart. Four manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death, but the tongue rules over them continually. There is one that is wise and teaches many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. There is one that shows wisdom in words and is hated. He shall be destitute of all food. For favor is not given him from Yahuwah, because he is deprived of all wisdom. Another is wise to himself, and the fruits of understanding are commendable in his mouth. A wise man instructs his people, and the fruits of his understanding fail not. A wise man shall be filled with Baraka, and all they that see him shall count him happy. The days of the life of man may be numbered. But the days of Yasharal are innumerable. 
A wise man shall inherit esteem among his people, and his name shall be perpetual. My son, prove your soul in your life, and see what is evil for it, and give not that unto it. For all things are not profitable for all men, neither has every soul pleasure in everything. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meats. For excess of meats bring sickness, and surfeiting will turn into choler. By surfeiting have many perished, but he that takes heed prolongs his life. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which he may have of him. For Yahuwah has created him. For of the Most High comes healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. The skill of a physician shall lift up his head, and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration. Yahuwah has created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. Was not the water made sweet with wood, that the virtue thereof might be known? And he has given men skill, that he might be honored in his marvelous works. With such he heals men, and takes away their pains. Of such the apothecary makes a confection, and of his works there is no end, and from him is peace over all the earth. My son, and your sickness be not negligent, but pray unto Yahuwah, and he will make you whole. Leave off from sin, and order your hands aright, and cleanse your heart from all wickedness. Give a sweet savor, and a memorial of fine flour, and make a fat offering, as not being. Then give place to the physician, for Yahuwah has created him. Let him not go from you, for you have need of him. There is a time when in their hands there is good success. For they shall also pray unto Yahuwah, that he will prosper that, which they give for ease and remedy to prolong life. He that sins before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. My son, let tears fall down over the dead, and begin to lament, as if you had suffered great harm yourself, and then cover his body according to the custom, and neglect not his burial. Weep bitterly, and make great moan, and use lamentation as he is worthy, and that a day or two, lest you be evil spoken of, and then comfort yourself for your heaviness. For if heaviness comes death, and the heaviness of the heart breaks strength, and affliction also sorrow remains, and the life of the poor is the curse of the heart. Take no heaviness to heart, drive it away, and remember the last end. Forget it not, for there is no turning again. You shall not do him good, but hurt yourself. Remember my judgment. For you also shall be so, yesterday for me, and today for you. When the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest, and be comforted for him, when his ruach is departed from him. The wisdom of a learned man comes by opportunity of leisure, and he that has little business shall become wise. How can he get wisdom that holds the plow, and that esteems in the gold, that drives oxen, and is occupied in their labors, and whose talk is of bullocks? He gives his mind to make furrows and is diligent to get a kind fodder. So every carpenter and workmaster that labors night and day and they that cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery and watch to finish a work. The smith also sitting by the anvil and considering the ironwork, the vapor of the fire wastes his flesh and he fights with the heat of the furnace, the noise of the hammer. And the anvil is ever in his ears, and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he makes. He sets his mind to finish his work, and watches to polish it perfectly. So does the potter sitting at his work, and turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always carefully set at his work, and makes all his work by number. He fashions the clay with his arm, and bows down his strength before his feet. He applies himself to lead it over and he is diligent to make clean the furnace. All these trusted their hands, and everyone is wise in his work. Without these, a city cannot be inhabited, and they shall not dwell where they will, nor go up and down. They shall not be sought for in public council, nor sit high in the assembly. They shall not sit on the judge's seat, nor understand the sentence of judgment. They cannot declare justice in judgment, and they shall not be found where parables are spoken. But they will maintain the state of the world and all their desires in the work of their craft. 
but he that gives his mind to the Torah of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients and be occupied in prophecies. He will guard the sayings of the renowned men and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries, for he has tried the good and the evil among men. He will give his heart to resort early to Yahuwah that made him and will pray before the Most High and will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. When the great Yahuwah will, he shall be filled with the Ruach of understanding. He shall pour out wise sentences and get thanks unto Yahuwah in his prayer. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge and in his secrets shall he meditate. He shall show forth that which he has learned and shall esteem in the Torah of the covenant of Yahuwah. Many shall commend his understanding, and so long as the world endures, it shall not be blotted out. His memorial shall not depart away, and his name shall live from generation to generation. Nations shall show forth his wisdom, and the assembly shall declare his praise. If he die, he shall leave a greater name than a thousand, and if he live, he shall increase it. Yet have I more to say, which I have thought upon. For I am filled as the moon at the full. Hearken unto me, ye as children, and bud forth as a rose growing by the brook of the field, and give ye a sweet savor as frankincense, and flourish as a lily. Send forth a smell, and sing a song of praise. Barak Yahuwah in all his works. Magnify his name, and show forth his praise with the songs of your lips, and with harps. And in praising him, you shall say after this manner. All the works of Yahuwah are exceeding good. And whatsoever he commands shall be accomplished in due season. And none may say, what is this? Wherefore is that? For at a time convenient, they shall all be sought out. At his commandment, the water stood as a heap. And at the words of his mouth, the receptacles of waters. At his commandment is done whatsoever pleases him. And none can hinder when he will save the works of all flesh are before him and nothing can be hid from his eyes he sees from everlasting to everlasting and there is nothing wonderful before him and man need not to say what is this wherefore is that for he has made all things for their uses his baraka covered the dry land as a river and watered it as a flood as he has turned the waters into saltness so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. As his ways are plain unto the Kodesh, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. For the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. All these things are for good to the righteous, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. There be rural cults that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandments, and they shall be ready upon earth. When need is, and when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. Therefore, from the beginning I was resolved, and thought upon these things, and had let them in writing. All the works of Yahuwah are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season, so that a man cannot say, This is worse than that. For in time they shall all be well approved. And therefore praise ye Yahuwah with the whole heart and mouth. And barat the name of Yahuwah. Great travail is created for every man. And a heavy yoke is upon the sons of men. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb. To the day that they return to the mother of all things. Their imagination of things to come. And the day of death trouble their thoughts. And cause fear of heart, 
from him that sits on a throne of esteem, unto him that is humbled in earth and ashes, from him that wears purple in a crown, unto him that is clothed with a linen frock, wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife. And in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep, do change his knowledge, a little or nothing in his rest, and afterward he is in his sleep, as in a day of keeping watch, troubled in the vision of his heart, as if he were escaped out of a battle. When all is safe, he awakens, and marvels that the fear was nothing. Such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. All things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again, and that which is of the waters returns into the sea. All bribery and injustice shall be blotted out, but true dealings shall endure forever. The goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river, and shall vanish with noise, like a great thunder and rain. While he opens his hand, he shall rejoice. So shall transgressors come to naught. The children of the wicked shall not bring forth many branches, but are as unclean roots upon a hard rock. The weed growing upon every water and bank of a river shall be pulled up before all grass. Bountifulness is as a most fruitful garden, and mercifulness endures forever. To labor, and to be content with that a man has, is a sweet life. But he that finds a treasure is above them both. Children, in the building of a city continues a man's name, but a blameless woman is accounted above them both. Wine and music rejoice the hearts, but the love of wisdom is above them both. The pipe and the psaltery make sweet melody, but a pleasant tongue is above them both. Your eye desires favor and beauty, but more than both, grain while it is green. A friend and companion never meet amiss, but above both is a wife with her husband. Brethren, a help are against time of trouble, but arms shall deliver more than them both. Gold and silver make the foot stand sure, but counsel is esteemed above them both. Riches and strength lift up the heart, but the reverence of Yahuwah is above them both. There is no want in the fear of Yahuwah, and it needs not to seek help. The fear of Yahuwah is a fruitful garden, and covers him above all esteem. My son, lead not a beggar's life, for better it is to die than to beg. The life of him that depends on another man's table is not to be counted for a life, for he pollutes himself with other men's meat, but a wise man well nurtured will be aware thereof. Begging is sweet in the mouth of the shameless, but in his belly there shall burn a fire. O oh, death! How bitter is the remembrance of you to a man that lives at rest in his possessions, unto the man that has nothing to vex him, and that has prosperity in all things, yea, unto him that is yet able to receive meat. O oh, death, acceptable is your sentence unto the needy, and unto him whose strength fails, that is now in the last age, and is vexed with all things, and to him that despairs, and has lost patience. Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before you and that come after. But this is the sentence of Yahuwah over all flesh. And why are you against the pleasure of the Most High? There is no inquisition in Sheol, whether you have lived ten or a hundred or a thousand years. The children of sinners are abominable children, and they that are conversing in the dwelling of the wicked. The inheritance of sinners' children shall perish and their posterity shall have a perpetual reproach. The children will complain of a wicked father, because they shall be reproached for his sake. Woe be unto you, wicked men, which have forsaken the Torah of the Most High. For if you increase, it shall be to your destruction. And if you be born, you shall be born to a curse. And if you die, a curse shall be your portion. All that are of the earth shall turn to earth again. So the wicked shall go from a curse to destruction. The mourning of men is about their bodies, 
but an ill name of sinners shall be blotted out. Have regard to your name, for that shall continue with you above a thousand great treasures of gold. A good life has but few days, but a good name endures forever. My children, keep discipline in peace, for wisdom that is hid and a treasure that is not seen, what profit is in them both? A man that hides his foolishness is better than a man that hides his wisdom. Therefore be shamefaced according to my word, for it is not good to retain all shamefacedness, neither is it altogether approved in everything. Be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother, and of a lie before a prince and a mighty man. Of an offense before a judge and ruler, of iniquity before an assembly and people, of unjust dealing before your partner and friends, and of theft in regard of the place where you sojourn, and in regard of the truth of Elohim and his covenant, and to lean with your elbow upon the meat, and of scorning to give and take, and of silence before them that salute you, and to look upon a harlot, and to turn away your face from your kinsmen, or to take away a portion or a gift, or to gaze upon another man's wife, or to be over busy with his maid, and come not near her bed, or of upbraiding speeches before friends, and after you have given, upbraid not, or of iterating and speaking, again that which you have heard, and of revealing the secrets, so shall you be truly shamefaced and find favor before all men. Of these things be not ashamed, and accept no person to sin thereby, of the Torah of the Most High, and his covenant, and of judgment to justify the wicked, of reckoning with your partners and travelers, or of the gift of the heritage of friends, of exactness of balance and weights, or of getting much or little, and of merchants and different selling, of much correction of children, and to make the side of an evil servant to bleed. Sure keeping is good where an evil woman is, and shut up where many hands are. Deliver all things in number and weight, and put all in writing that you give out or receive in. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish, in the extreme age that contends with those that are young. Thus shall you be truly learned and approved of all men living. The father wakens for the daughter when no man knows, and the care for her takes away sleep. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. And having a husband, lest she should misbehave herself. And when she is married, lest she should be barren. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter, lest she make you a laughing stock to your enemies, and a byword in the city, and reproach among the people and make you ashamed before the multitude. Behold not everybody's beauty, and sit not in the midst of women, for from garments comes a moth, and from women wickedness. Better is the rudeness of a man than a courteous woman, a woman, I say, which brings shame and reproach. I will now remember the works of Yahuwah, and declare the things that I have seen, and the words of Yahuwah are his works. The sun that gives light looks upon all things, and the work thereof is full of the esteem of Yahuwah. Yahuwah has not given power to the Kodoshim to declare all his marvelous works. Which all should die, Yahuwah firmly settled, that whatsoever is might be established for his esteem. He seeks out the deep and the heart and considers their crafty devices. For Yahuwah knows all that may be known, and he beholds the signs of the world. He declares the things that are past and for to come and reveals the steps of hidden things. No thought escapes him, neither any word is hidden from him. He has garnished the excellent works of his wisdom, and he is from everlasting to everlasting. Unto him may nothing be added, neither can he be diminished, and he has no need of any counselor. Oh, how desirable are all his works, and that a man may see even to a spark. All these things live and remain forever for all uses, and they are all obedient. All things are double one against another, and he has made nothing imperfect. One thing establishes the good or another, and who shall be filled with beholding his esteem? 
the pride of the heights, the clear expanse, the beauty of the Shamayim, with his esteemed show, the sun when it appears, declaring at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the Most High. At noon it parches the country, and who can abide the burning heats thereof? A man blowing a furnace is in works of heat, but the sun burns the mountains three times more. Breathing out fiery vapors and sending forth bright beams, it dims the eyes. Great is Yahuwah that made it, and that his commandment runs hastily. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times, and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreases in her perfection. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the expanse of the Shamayim. The beauty of the Shamayim, the esteem of the stars, an ornament given lights in the highest places of Yahuwah. At the commandment of the Kadosh one, they will stand in their order and never faint in their watches. Look upon the rainbow and praise him that made it. Very beautiful it is in the brightness thereof. It surrounds the Shamayim about with an esteemed circle, and the hands of the Most High have bended it. By his commandment he makes the snow to fall apace, and sends swiftly the lightnings of his judgment. Through this the treasures are opened, and the clouds fly forth as fowls. By his great power he makes the clouds firm, and the hailstones are broken small. At his sight the mountains are shaken, and at his will the south wind blows. The noise of the thunder makes the earth to tremble. So does the northern storm and the whirlwind. As birds flying, he scatters the snow. And the falling down thereof is as the lighting of grasshoppers. The eye marvels at the beauty of the whiteness thereof. And the heart is astonished at the raining of it. The old frost, also as salt, he pours on the earth. And being congealed, it lies on the top of sharp stakes. When the cold north wind blows, and the water is congealed into ice, it abides upon every gathering together of water, and clothes the water as with a breastplate. It devours the mountains, and burns the wilderness, and consumes the grass as fire. A present remedy of all is a mist coming speedily. A dew coming after heat refreshes. By his counsel he appeases the deep, and plants islands therein. They that sail on the sea tell of the danger thereof. And when we hear it with our ears, we marvel at that place. For therein be strange and wondrous works. Variety of all kinds of beasts and sea monsters created. By him the end of them has prosperous success. And by his word all things consist. We may speak much and yet come short. Wherefore in some he is all. How shall we be able to magnify him? For he is great above all his works. Yahuwah is terrible and very great, and marvelous is his power. When we esteem Yahuwah, exalt him as much as you can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength, and be not weary, for you can never go far enough. Who has seen him that he might tell us, and who can magnify him as he is? There are yet here greater things than these be, for we have seen but a few of his works. For Yahuwah has made all things, and to the righteous has he given wisdom. Let us now praise famous men, and our fathers that begot us. Yahuwah has wrought great esteem by them through his great power from the beginning, such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding, and declaring prophecies. Leaders of the people by their counsels, and by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. Wise and eloquent are their instructions, such as found out musical tunes and recited verses in writing. Rich men furnished with ability, living peaceably in their habitations. All these were honored in their generations, and were the esteem of their times. There be of them that had left a name behind them, that their praises might be reported. And some there be, which have no memorial, who have perished, as though they had never been, and are become as though they had never been born, and their children after them. But these were merciful men, whose righteousness has not been forgotten.
with their seed shall continually remain a good inheritance, and their children are within the covenant. Their seed stands fast, and their children for their sakes. Their seed shall remain forever, and their esteem shall not be blotted out. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name lives forevermore. The people will tell of their wisdom, and the assembly will show forth their praise. Enoch pleased Yahuwah, and was translated, being an example of repentance to all generations. Noah was found perfect and righteous. In the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore was he left as a remnant onto the earth when the flood came. An everlasting covenant was made with him, that all flesh should perish no more by the flood. Abraham was a great father of many people, and esteem was there none like unto him, who kept the Torah of the Most High, and was in covenant with him. He established a covenant in his flesh, and when he was proved, he was found trustworthy. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that we should barat the nations in his seed, and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth, and exalt his seed as the stars, and cause them to inherit from sea to sea, and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. With ye shock, likewise for Abraham his father's sake, the Baraka of all men, and the covenant, and made it rest upon the head of Yaakov, he acknowledged him in his Baraka, and gave him a heritage, and divided his portions. Among the twelve tribes did he part them. And he brought out of him a merciful man, which found favor in the sight of all flesh, even Moshe, beloved of Elohim and men, whose memorial is Baruch. He made him like to the esteemed Kodashim, and magnified him, so that his enemies stood in fear of him. By his words he caused the wonders to cease, and he made him esteemed in the sight of kings, and gave him a commandment for his people, and showed him part of his esteem. He kadosh him in his trustworthiness and meekness, and chose him out of all men. He made him to hear his voice, and brought him into the dark cloud, and gave him commandments before his face, even the Torah of life and knowledge, that he might teach Yaakov his covenants, and Yasharal his judgments. He exalted Aharon, a righteous man like unto him, even his brother, of the tribe of Levi. An everlasting covenant he made with him, and gave him the priesthood among the people. He beautified him with comely ornaments, and clothed him with a robe of esteem. He put upon him perfect esteem, and strengthened him with rich garments, with breeches, with a long robe, and the ephod. And he compassed him with pomegranates, and with many golden bells round about, that as he went there might be a sound, and a noise made that might be heard in the temple, for a memorial to the children of his people, with a kodesh garment, with gold, and blue silk, and purple, the work of the embroidery, with a breastplate of judgment, and with umim and tumim, with twisted scarlet, the work of the cunning workmen, with precious stones graven like seals, and set in gold, the work of the jeweler, with a writing engraved for memorial, after the number of the tribes of Yasharal, he set a crown of gold upon the turban, wherein was engraved Kodesha, in ornaments of honor, a costly work, the desires of the eyes, goodly and beautiful. Before him there were none such, neither did ever any stranger put them on, but only his children, and his children's children perpetually. Their sacrifices shall be wholly consumed every day, twice continually. Moshe consecrated him, and anointed him with Kodesh oil, this was appointed unto him by an everlasting covenant, and to his seed, so long as the Shamaim shall remain, that they shall minister unto him, and execute the office of the priesthood, and barat the people in his name. He chose him out of all men, living to offer sacrifices to Yahuwah, incense, and a sweet savor, for a memorial, to make reconciliation for his people. He gave unto him his commandments, and authority in the statutes of judgments, that he should teach Yaakov the testimonies, and inform Yasharal in his Torah. Strangers conspired together against him, and maligned him in the wilderness. Even the men that were of Dathan's and Aviram's side, in the assembly of Korah, with fury and wrath. This Yahuwah saw, and it displeased him, 
and in his wrathful indignation were they consumed. He did wonders upon them to consume them with the fiery flame. But he made Aharon more honorable and gave him a heritage and divided unto him the first fruits of the increase. Especially he prepared bread in abundance. For they eat of the sacrifices of Yahuwah, which he gave unto him and his seed. Howbeit in the land of the people he had no inheritance, neither had he any portion among the people. For Yahuwah himself is his portion and inheritance. The third in this theme is Phineas, the son of Elazar. Because he had zeal in the fear of Yahuwah and stood up with good courage of heart, when the people were turned back, it made reconciliation for Yasharal. Therefore was there a covenant of peace made with him, that he should be the chief of the sanctuary and of his people, and that he and his posterity should have the dignity of the priesthood forever. According to the covenant made with Dawid, son of Yeshai, of the tribe of Yehuda, that the inheritance of the king should be to his posterity alone. So the inheritance of Aharon should also be unto his seed. Elohim give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness, that their good things be not abolished, and that their esteem may endure forever. Yahusha, the son of Nun, was valiant in the wars, and was a successor of Moshe in prophecies who according to his name was made great for the saving of the elect of Elohim and taking vengeance of the enemies that rose up against them, that he might set Yasharal in their inheritance. How great esteem he got when he did lift up his hands and stretch out his sword against the cities, who before him so stood to it, for Yahuwah himself brought his enemies onto him. Did not the sun go back by his means? It was not one day as long as two. He called upon the Most High, Yahuwah, when the enemies pressed upon him on every side, and the great Yahuwah heard him, and with hailstones of mighty power, he made the battle to fall violently upon the nations. And in the descent of Bekorin, he destroyed them that resisted, that the nations might know all their strength, because he fought in the sight of Yahuwah, and he followed all Elohim. In the time of Moshe also, he did a work of mercy. He and Caleb, the son of Yefune, and that they withstood the assembly and withheld the people from sin and appeased the wicked murmuring. And of the 600,000 people on foot, they too were preserved to bring them into the heritage, even onto the land that flows with milk and honey. Yahuwah gave strength also unto Caleb, which remained with him unto his old age, so that he entered upon the high places of the land, and his seed obtained it for a heritage, that all the children of Yasharal might see that it is good to follow Yahuwah. And concerning the judges, everyone by name, whose heart went not a horn, nor departed from Yahuwah, let their memory be Baruch. Let their bones flourish out of their place, and let the name of them that were honored be continued upon their children. Shemuel, the prophet of Yahuwah, beloved of his master, established a kingdom and anointed princes over his people. By the Torah of Yahuwah, he judged the assembly, and Yahuwah had respect unto Yaakov. By his trustworthiness, he was found a true prophet, and by his word, he was known to be trustworthy in vision. He called upon all Yahuwah when his enemies pressed upon him on every side, when he offered the sucking lamb, and Yahuwah thundered from the Shamayim, and with a great noise made his voice to be heard, and he destroyed the rulers of the Tyrians and all the princes of the Philistines, and before his long sleep he made protestations in the sight of Yahuwah and his anointed. I have not taken any man's goods so much as a shoe and no man did accuse him. And after his death, he prophesied and showed the king his end and lifted up his voice from the earth in prophecy to blot out the wickedness of the people. And after him rose up Nathan to prophesy in the time of Dawid. As is the fat taken away from the peace offering, so was Dawid chosen out of the children of Yasharal. He played with lions as with kids 
and with bears as with lambs. Slew he not a giant when he was yet but young? And did he not take away reproach from the people when he lifted up his hand with the stone in the sling and beat down the boasting of Goliath? For he called upon the Most High, Yahuwah, and he gave him strength in his right hand to slay that mighty warrior and set up the horn of his people. So the people honored him with ten thousands and praised him in the Berakoth of Yahuwah and that he gave him a crown of esteem. For he destroyed the enemies on every side and brought to nothing the Philistines his adversaries, and broke their horn and sunder unto this day. In all his works he praised the Kadosh one most high with words of esteem. With his whole heart he sung songs, and loved him that made him. He set singers also before the altar, that by their voices they might make sweet melody, and daily sing praises in their songs. He beautified their feasts, and set in order the solemn times until the end, that they might praise his Kodesh name, and that the temple might sound from morning. Yahuwah took away his sins, and exalted his horn forever. He gave him a covenant of kings, and a throne of esteem in Yasharal. After him rose up a wise son, and for his sake he dwelt at large. Shaloma reigned in a peaceable time, and was honored. For Elohim made all quiet round about him, that he might build a house in his name, and prepare his sanctuary forever. How wise were you in your youth, and, as a flood, filled with understanding? Your soul covered the whole earth, and you filled it with dark parables. Your name went far unto the islands, and for your peace you were beloved. The countries marveled at you for your songs, and proverbs, and parables, and interpretations. By the name of Yahuwah Elohim, which is called Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharal, you did gather gold as tin, and did multiply silver as lead. You did bow your loins unto women, and by your body you were brought into subjection. You disdain your honor, and pollute your seed, so that you brought wrath upon your children, and were greed for your folly. So the kingdom was divided, and out of Ephraim ruled a rebellious kingdom. But Yahuwah would never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect, and the seed of him that loves him he would not take away. Wherefore, he gave a remnant unto Yaakov, and out of him a root unto Dawid. Thus rested Shalomah with his fathers, and of his seed he left behind him Rehavon, even the foolishness of the people, and one that had no understanding who turned away the people through his counsel. There was also Yaravon, the son of Nebat, who caused Yasharal to sin, and showed Ephraim the way of sin. And their sins were multiplied exceedingly, that they were driven out of the land. For they sought out all wickedness, till the vengeance came upon them. Then stood up Eliyahu, the prophet as fire, and his word burned like a lamp. He brought a sore famine upon them, and by his zeal he diminished their number. By the word of Yahuwah, he shut up the Shamayim, and also three times brought down fire. O oh, Eliyahu, how were you honored in your wondrous deeds? And who may esteem like unto you? Who did raise up a dead man from death, and his soul from the place of the dead, by the word of the Most High? Who brought kings to destruction, and honorable men from their bed? Who heard the rebuke of Yahuwah in Sinai, and in Korib the judgment of vengeance? Who anointed kings to take revenge, and prophets to succeed after him? Who was taken up in a whirlwind of fire, and in a chariot of fiery horses? Who were ordained for reproofs in their times, to pacify the wrath of Yahuwah's judgment? Before it broke forth into fury, and to turn the heart of the father unto the son, and to restore the tribes of Yaakov. Baruch are they that saw you, and slept in love, but we shall surely live. Eliyahu it was, who was covered with a whirlwind, and Elisha was filled with his ruach. While he lived, he was not moved with the presence of any prince, neither could any bring him into subjection. No word could overcome him. 
and after his death, his body prophesied. He did wonders in his life, and at his death were his works marvelous. For all this, the people repented not, neither departed they from their sins, till they were spoiled and carried out of their land, and were scattered through all the earth. Yet there remained a small people, and a ruler in the house of Dawid, of whom some did that which was pleasing to Elohim, and some multiplied sins. Heskiyahu fortified his city, and brought in water into the midst thereof. He dug the hard rock with iron, and made wells for waters. In his time Sankarev came up, and sent Rabshakeh, and lifted up his hand against Sion, and boasted proudly. Then trembled their hearts and hands, and they were in pain, as women in travail. But they called upon Yahuwah, which is merciful. And stretched out their hands toward him. And immediately the Kadosh one heard them out of the Shamaim and delivered them by the ministry of Yeshayahu. He smote the host of Asher, and his messenger destroyed them. For Hezkiyahu had done the thing that pleased Yahuwah, and was strong in the ways of Dawi his father, as Yeshayahu the prophet, who was great and trustworthy in his vision, had commanded him. In his time, the sun went backward, and he lengthened the king's life. He saw by an excellent ruach what should come to pass at the last, and he comforted them that mourned the Sion. He showed what should come to pass forever, and secret things wherever they came. The remembrance of Yoshiyahu is like the composition of the perfume that is made by the arts of the apothecary. It is sweet as honey in all mouths, and as music at the banquet of wine. He behaved himself uprightly in the conversion of the people, and took away the abominations of iniquity. He directed his heart on to Yahuwah, and in the time of the wicked, he established the worship of Elohim. All, except Dawid and Heskiyahu and Yoshiahu were defective, for they forsook the Torah of the Most High. Even the kings of Yehuda failed. Therefore, he gave their power on to others, and their esteem to a strange nation. They burnt the chosen city of the sanctuary, and made the streets desolate, according to the prophecy of Yermayahu. For they entreated him evil, who nevertheless was a prophet, Kadosh in his mother's womb, that he might root out, and afflict, and destroy, and that he might build up also, and plant. It was Yekeskel, who saw the esteemed vision, which was show him upon the chariot of the Caribbean. For he made mention of the enemies under the figure of the rain, and directed them that went right. And of the twelve prophets let the memorial be Baruch, and let their bones flourish again out of their place. For they comforted Yaakov, and delivered them by assured hope. How shall we magnify Zerubbabel? Even he was as a signet on the right hand. So was Yehusha, the son of Jehoshadak, who in their time built the house and set up a Kodesh temple to Yahuwah, which was prepared for everlasting esteem. And among the elect was Nechemyahu, whose renown is great, who raised up for us the walls that were fallen and set up the gates and the bars and raised up our ruins again. But upon the earth was no man created like Enoch, for he was taken from the earth. Neither was there a young man born like Yosef, a governor of his brethren, a stay of the people, whose bones were regarded of Yahuwah. Shem and Seth were in great honor among men, and so was Adam above every living thing in creation. Shimon, the high priest, the son of Onyahu, who in his life repaired the house again, and in his days fortified the temple, and by him was built from the foundation the double height, the high fortress of the wall about the temple. In his days the cistern to receive water, being encompassed as the sea, was covered with plates of brass. He took care of the temple that it should not fall, and fortified the city against besieging. How was he honored in the midst of the people, in his coming out of the sanctuary. He was as the morning star in the midst of a cloud, and as the moon at the full, 
as the sun shining upon the temple of the Most High, and as the rainbow giving light in the bright clouds, and as the flower of roses in the spring of the year, as lilies by the rivers of waters, and as the branches of the frankincense tree in the time of summer, as fire and incense in the censer, and as a vessel of beaten gold set with all manner of precious stones, and as a fair olive tree budding forth fruit, and as a cypress tree which grows up to the clouds, when he put on the robe of honor, and was clothed with the perfection of esteem, when he went up to the Kodesh altar, he made the garment of Kodesh our honorable. When he took the portions out of the priest's hands, he himself stood by the hearth of the altar, compassed about as a young setter in Lebanon, and as palm trees compassed they him round about. So were all the sons of Aharon in their esteem, and the oblations of Yahuwah in their hands, before all the assembly of Yasharal, and finishing the service at the altar, that he might adorn the offering of the Most High, all should die. He stretched out his hand to the cup, and poured of the blood of the grape. He poured out at the foot of the altar a sweet-smelling savor unto the Most High, King of all. Then shouted the sons of Aharon, and sounded the silver trumpets, and made a great noise to be heard, for a remembrance before the Most High. Then all the people together hasted, and fell down to the earth upon their faces, to worship their Yahuwah Sebaoth, the Most High. The singers also sang praises with their voices. With great variety of sounds was their made sweet melody. And the people besought Yahuwah, the Most High, by prayer before him that is merciful, till the solemnity of Yahuwah was ended, and they had finished his service. Then he went down and lifted up his hands over the whole assembly of the children of Yasharal, to give the Barakah of Yahuwah with his lips, and to rejoice in his name. And they bowed themselves down to worship the second time, that they might receive a Barakah from the Most High. Now therefore, Barak ye the Elohim of all, which only does wondrous things everywhere, which exalts our days from the womb, and deals with us according to his mercy. He grants us joyfulness of heart, and that peace may be in our days and y'all shall all forever that he will confirm his mercy with us and deliver us at his time. There be two manner of nations which my heart abhors, and the third is no nation. They that sit upon the mountain of Shomeron, and they that dwell among the Philistines, and that foolish people that dwell in Shechem. Yahushua, the son of Sirach, of Jerusalem, has written in this book the instruction of understanding and knowledge who out of his heart pour forth wisdom. Baruch is he that shall be exercised in these things, and he that lays them up in his heart shall become wise. For if he do them, he shall be strong to all things. For the light of Yahuwah leads him, who gives wisdom to the righteous. Baruch be the name of Yahuwah forever. So be it, so shall it be. A prayer of Yahushua, the son of Sirach. I will thank you, O Yahuwah, and King, and praise you, O Elohim, my Savior. I do give praise unto your name, for you are my defender and helper, and have preserved my body from destruction, and from the snare of the slanderous tongue, and from the lips that forget lies, and have been my helper against my adversaries, and have delivered me according to the multitude of your mercies and greatness of your name. From the teeth of them that were ready to devour me, and out of the hands of such as sought after my life, and from the manifold afflictions which I had, from the choking of fire on every side, and from the midst of the fire which I kindled not, from the death of the belly of Sheol, from an unclean tongue, and from lying words, by an accusation to the king from an unrighteous tongue, my soul drew near even unto death, my soul was near to Sheol beneath. They compassed me on every side, and there was no man to help me. I looked for the help of men, but there was none. Then thought I upon your mercy, O Yahuwah, and upon your acts of old, how you delivered such as wait for you, and saved them out of the hands of the enemies. Then lifted I up my supplications from the earth, and prayed for deliverance from death. 
I called upon Yahuwah, the father of my master, that he would not lead me in the days of my trouble and in the time of the proud when there was no help. I would praise your name continually and would sing praises with thanksgiving. And so my prayer was heard. For you saved me from destruction and delivered me from the evil time. Therefore will I give thanks and praise you and barak your name, O Yahuwah. When I was yet young, or ever I went abroad, I desired wisdom openly in my prayer. I prayed for her before the temple, and would seek her out even to the end. Even from the flower to the grape was ripe, has my heart delighted in her. My foot went the right way. From my youth up, I sought after her. I bowed down my ear a little, and received her, and got much learning. I profited therein. Therefore will I ascribe esteem unto him that gives me wisdom. For I purpose to do after her, and earnestly I follow that which is good. So shall I not be confounded. My soul has wrestled with her, and in my doings I was exact. I stretched forth my hands to the Shamaim above, and bewail my ignorances of her. I directed my soul unto her, and I found her in pureness. I have had my hearts joined with her from the beginning. Therefore shall I not be forsaken. My heart was troubled in seeking her. Therefore have I gotten a good possession. Yahuwah has given me a tongue for my reward, and I will praise him therewith. Draw near unto me, you unlearned, and dwell in the house of learning. Wherefore are you slow, and what say ye to these things, seeing your souls are very thirsty? I opened my mouth and said, Buy her for yourselves without money. Put your neck under the yoke. And let your soul receive instruction. She is hard at hand to find. Behold with your eyes. How that I had but little labor. And have gotten unto me much rest. Get learning with a great sum of money. And get much gold by her. Let your soul rejoice in his mercy. And be not ashamed of his praise. Work your work early. And in his time he will give you your reward.